Hi guys! So I am four weeks postpartum today, which means they're four weeks old. This is Kaisen. Say hi! <laughs> so fat. Oh, hi baby! Um, they will, they will actually be one month old in three days. So it's not quite April 30th. But, it's, but they were born four Fridays ago, so I hate the way that that doesn't match up. It's really annoying. So I have quite a bit to update on. I'm going to start with their update first. Um, they sleep a lot more than I remember Lilia sleeping. They pretty much sleep all the time. And I don't know if it has to do with the fact that they were born a little bit earlier than Lilia was. Because she wasn't born in, uh, she was born on her due date exactly. And they were born um, at 38 weeks and 3 days. So they were full term. Um, however, they were a little bit smaller. I don't know if that has something to do with it. Let me know um, what your guys' kids did. Because I don't remember, I, I remember Lilia smiling at a month old. And... Um, she'd be awake for hours, and Caden sleeps pretty much all day, all night, and Kyson is awake a little bit more. Um, he, he'll wake up for maybe about an hour at a time, and Caden will sometimes. He'll wake up for a little bit sometimes, but for the most part, they sleep all day and all night, and I just never remember them sleeping that much. So that being said, I'm not nearly as sleep deprived as I was with Lilia, um, and I think I... I am actually fully convinced into the magic powers of the placenta pills because um, I went like two days without taking the pills and I felt really really tired and I actually felt um, I felt like my milk, uh, not like I was losing milk, but like my milk was evening out and then as soon as, as, soon as I took the pills again my boobs felt really full and um, I had a ton of energy again. So, so I don't know, it could just be my head and me thinking that it's working and because you know minds are powerful but I really really think that the placenta pills are working so I definitely have I've definitely had a positive experience with those Kaisen will smile once in a while but oh god that was Kaisen but still not nearly as much as I remember Lilia smiling and Kaden he smiled like once or twice that I think he was like actually responding but for the most part they don't really smile like um they smile in their sleep and they'll get like a, a generally happy look on their face, but they won't like full on smile. So they're not quite to that stage yet, but I am pretty sure that Kyson smiles uh, sometimes. And I think, and I'm sure as the days go on, um, they're going to, it's just going to be any day now that start, they start smiling and stuff. Kyson is now in size one diapers and he fits in all newborn clothes in some zero to three clothes. And Kaden is still newborn everything. He no longer fits in the preemie clothes, but he's definitely in the newborn clothes and some of the newborn clothes are still a little bit too big. I am very proud to say that I have yet to be peed on for having two boys, that's pretty good. Kaden, for him to be happy, he has to be swaddled all the time and like tightly swaddled. To sleep you have to swaddle him really really well and Kyson doesn't like to be swaddled at all. It's just just Kaden, you have to swaddle him up. Also Kyson holds his head extremely well. He can hold his head for like a few minutes even. He's just so strong. He's always been the strong one from the beginning so he's just he holds his head really well, and Kaden, sometimes he can hold his head a little bit, but not as much as his brother. So just in general, Kaisen seems, you know, it almost seems like he's older, and he is by seven minutes, but I mean, it almost seems like, like he was born like a week before or something. He's just more ahead of his brother, and also he's a lot bigger than his brother, so that probably has something to do with it. Their next appointment isn't until May 17th, so I don't know how much they weigh or anything. I think Kyson weighs like at least 10 pounds, probably, because they're just, that he's huge, like he's a huge chunk ball, and you can definitely see the size difference between the two. And Kaden is definitely getting bigger than he was before. He's just not as big as Kyson, so it seems like he's so small, but he is gaining weight, and he is, um, he is getting bigger. It's just compared to his brother, it's not, you can't really tell as much. I, I don't know the word, but Kyson seems like he's just more, um, like he's older. That's the only way that I can explain it. And it's not, it's not bad because they're both on track for where they should be at their age. It's just, I, it's just weird to see, like, to compare them. Also, Kyson does not take the pacifier and Kaden does. And that is really frustrating because Kyson not only uses me to nurse, um, for food, but for comfort also. And that's hard because he also will not tolerate um, not being fed when he wants to be fed. So if they're both, like, they'll both wake up screaming and crying because they're starving. And um, if you give Kaden a pacifier, he'll hold off for a few minutes, whereas Kyson will just scream and cry. So that really sucks that he won't take the pacifier because 
it wouldn't be that big of a deal if it was just him, but since there's two, I need like some way for him to like be okay without screaming. And we don't really have anything. <laughs> also in general, they're starting to get harder. Um, they're starting to get harder, not to take care of, but um, they're just awake more and they require more attention and more, um, I don't know how to explain it. Like when they were newborns, they would just like sleep all the time and they still pretty much sleep all the time, but they're still more awake than they were before. So they're starting to get more demanding. And um, so that's definitely a big difference, which is not a bad thing because of course I'm gonna give them all my attention or a third of my attention. <laughs> One thing I don't think I've talked about in my previous updates because um, it wasn't a, an, an issue yet is Lilia's regression. She, I have often heard that older siblings will regress when they have uh, new members of the family. And at first she was doing really well. There was not really much of a big difference. But now I think she's starting to realize that they're not going anywhere and she does really well with them when she's with them. But one thing that she does now that she never did before is um, she doesn't sleep through the night. And she slept through the night since she was like a year old, which was late anyway. But she's been sleeping through the night for like almost a year now, like straight sleeping through the night. And she sleeps in a toddler bed now. She doesn't sleep through the night. She wakes up once and sometimes twice a night. Which is really frustrating when you uh, when you have two newborns because sometimes she'll accidentally wake one of them up or both of them up. And there was one night actually where I got all three of them to sleep and I finally laid down to go to sleep. And then Lilia comes walking out of her room because she knows how to open doors and she has a toddler bed. So she just gets up and walks out of her room and comes to my room because mama, mama, mama. So she comes walking out of her room and then Kaisen wakes up and then Kaden starts screaming. So it's like all three of them wake up at the same exact time and they all three want my attention and it's really, really hard. And one of these days I actually want to make like a night in the life. Like, you know how I do the day in a life? I'm going to do like a night in a life because it's pretty insane. I think Kaisen wants to be in the video. Don't get some buddy, say hi. Yeah, that's just one thing that I wanted to point out is that she does not sleep through the night anymore, which is really frustrating. So I'm hoping that, actually last night she did sleep through the night. It's every couple days she'll pull a whole um, full night of sleep thing. But for the most part, she wakes up at least once or twice a night, which is really frustrating. Also, breastfeeding is going, overall it's going really well. It's just hard sometimes because I have so much to do around the house. I rarely get to sit and breastfeed. Um, I walk around <laughs> and breastfeed a lot, so I'll have just like... One guy over here chilling like this, and then I'm like doing stuff with his hand, depending on which side I'm nursing on. And also, I'll nurse in the Nobi, I'll nurse in the Moby wrap once in a while. But it's really hard to like. I don't really have time to sit there and adjust it, so I don't get to wear the Moby wrap as much as I would like to. Um, but I will often nurse in that, and I'm just like constantly nursing. Like there's a baby on me pretty much 24/7. Kyson has been super awake today, especially. Look and say hi. <laughs> but yeah, as for my supply with breastfeeding, I would probably say that I have an oversupply because I have more than enough for both babies, like I've said before, and I have enough to pump and I still feel really, really full. And I think that is partly related to the placenta pills, which is, I'm not complaining because that's awesome. I'd rather, much rather have too much milk than not enough. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all for them for their update. Um, as for me, I am no longer bleeding, which is amazing. My muscle separation and my hernia, they're getting better, um, but they're definitely still there. Both of them are still there. And I'm really, really, really hoping that they're gonna repair themselves, but the six week and the 12 week mark keep creeping closer and closer together. And I'm really hoping that, um, and so I'm really starting to get um, worried that I'm gonna need the surgery, but I don't know, I'm just really hoping I'm not. A lot can happen in like four weeks. So I'm hoping it's just going to all close itself. If not, then at least there's other ways that I'll be able to fix it. It's just really hard uh, because I can't lift anything that's heavier than the babies. So I can't lift Lilia at all, and which makes it really hard to take care of her because if you have a toddler or, I mean, she's not even two years old yet. So it's really hard to not to take care of someone her age and not be able to lift her. So I definitely require um, a lot of extra help. And my mom is amazing. Oh my god, like if I didn't have my mom, I would not be here. I'd be dead. <laughs> I don't know. I would have gone insane a long time ago. Oh, I forgot to talk about their night schedule. Um, so this video is going to kind of be all over the place, but at night, they will fall asleep for like one long stretch at night. And that's like the first time they like fall asleep because they sleep all day. So it's kind of hard to um, differentiate between like when they're going to go to sleep and when they're just like taking a nap. Between the two of them, 
They will usually fall asleep between um, 8 and 10 in their swings and they will sleep until midnight or 1. Once in a while one of them will sleep till like 2, 2.30. There was one night actually where Kyson slept 6 hours straight which I think is technically means he slept through the night even though he only slept until 2 because he like fell asleep at like 8 or something, 6, so I don't remember. But the, yeah, they'll fall asleep in their swings and they'll sleep for a good 3 to 4 hours um, if we're lucky and then when they wake up we'll just bring them in bed with us. So <laughs> we are definitely still co-sleeping. That is I cannot imagine not co-sleeping right now because it's so it's so hard to nurse with them co-sleeping. I can't imagine them like not co-sleeping and me trying to nurse. But they will sleep in their cribs once in a while just because I'm trying to get them used to their cribs because I'm hoping that I'll be able to transfer them sooner rather than later. <laughs> and well, th that's another thing though. I really, really, really had full intentions for them to sleep together like in a bassinet or crib and they don't like it, which is really frustrating because I thought that there was twins were like supposed to sleep together and it was supposed to like it was supposed to like help calm them and help them feel like more I don't know just more comfortable but they don't like it they wake each other up and they, they're not on the same schedule and Kyson doesn't even like to sleep like sitting still unless he's like on top of you but yeah I just totally thought that they were gonna sleep together and I'm reading this book called healthy sleep habits happy twins I haven't gotten very far yet but I'm hoping to read the whole thing and it's gonna help me like figure out this whole twin sleeping thing because right now I'm just lost. There'll, there'll be days where um, one one is awake, he nurses, he falls asleep, and then the other one wakes up, he nurses, he falls asleep, then the other one wakes up and nurses and falls asleep. So they're like on a complete opposite schedule and it's really hard because I, I strongly believe in nursing on demand. But yeah, anyway, that's a little like rant about that because I cannot figure out the whole twin sleeping thing. And I'm hoping, I heard that once they hit the, the six week mark, there's kind of like this thing that just clicks in their head that helps them sleep more or not more, but better, like better quality sleep. So I'm hoping that I'm just kind of waiting for that six week mark to actually, to actually take action with trying um, something else. Oh, and that's the other thing is they constantly... They use me for nursing all the time and when they're on me, like, I can't make them fall asleep on me without nursing. Like, if they're by me, I don't know if they're like, smell my, mil smell my milk or whatever, but they just want to nurse all the time. So, usually what happens is I'll just nurse him and then I give him to Drake and then Drake can put him to sleep like that. Like, Kyson was trying to fall asleep on me right now and he just kept, he wanted to nurse, nurse, nurse because he, when he's on me, all he wants to do is nurse. I can't get him to like, I can't rock him, I can't pat him, I can't do anything like that, and now I just put him on Drake and he's pretty much out. <laughs> so, yeah, I completely fail at the whole padding, like the whole padding, rocking, anything like that. All I want me for is my boobs. Um, so I bought nursing bras the other day, as you saw in my, uh, my, um, day in the life video, and when the lady measured me, she asked me if I wanted to be measured so I could, like, accurately pick the right bra or whatever. So she measured me around, and she told me that I was a double D slash E, and I was like, what? Because I've never ever measured that big in my entire life. So I was like, are you kidding me? I ended up buying a D just because um, like I would, I fit in the double D's, but it was, I know that my boobs are going to eventually like even out when my milk supply like decides what it wants to be. So I went ahead and just bought a D because they fit in there and I know it'll get better like with time. It's overall, it's better to just buy a D rather than buying a W. But I just thought that was like insane. Also, I talked about in my last video how I was gonna buy a different wrap to hold my stomach all like in together because the one the hospital gave me was getting too small. And I did buy one and I bought, it's called the Squeam and eventually I'm gonna do a review on it. I'm just gonna wear it for a little bit longer and get the hang of it so I can know like the full, like everything about it before I do a review on it. Overall, I really, really like it. It's definitely better than the other one that I got. Uh, the other one had, from the hospital, had like these long, um, like, plastic things that like jammed into like my hips when I sat down. And this one has, you can tell it has a little bit of plastic, I'll show you guys. You can tell it has a little bit of plastic or something in here, so once in a while it'll dig in to me a little bit, but not nearly as bad as the hospital one did. But this is what it looks like. It basically looks like a corset. And this is kind of a pain because you have to do all this, but... It definitely holds everything in and it feels really, really, really good when I'm wearing it rather than having everything just like hang out. But yeah, I wear this pretty much 24-7. Actually, not at nights. I wear it all day and then I'll take it off at night just because it's too uncomfortable to sleep in. Um, the only reason I'm not wearing it right now is because it makes marks on my stomach. I'm going to show you my stomach. So 
Um, I am back down to my pre-pregnancy weight now, but my body definitely doesn't look like it. And I remember this happening with Lilia too. I was like back down to my pre-pregnancy weight, but it's not like, it doesn't look like it at all. So I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my four week postpartum belly. Okay, so here's the shirt on. Here's with the shirt up. So I just have this right here, and it's just loose skin. So let me go ahead and show you guys more up close. All right, so this is what my stomach looks like now. You can see my belly button is not fully back in yet. And you can tell my skin is, like, really, really loose down here. And from the side, you can see... My skin is still pretty loose, but it's significantly better than it was before. And then my belly button is just kind of... This is where the hernia is, so I'm not really expecting that to be back down yet. And I have like three random stretch marks down here that are still pink, but the rest of them are really, really faded. And if you guys asked about my tattoo, and it's not... It didn't change at all. It's actually exactly how it was before. And I got it. So that's pretty much all for this update. Oh, um, also, I, w I think I'm going to eventually make a video just about this, but I know I'm going to get a lot of people asking, like, um, about, like, what I do about my stomach and everything. So what what I do basically is I've just been using the rose hip, I think you say, rose hip seed oil, and I do, like, the same thing, like, every single day. So I'll have to make a video on that whenever it starts getting, like, even more better, but I think that's why my stretch marks have faded so much. And my skin is, it's still really, really loose, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot better than it was when I first had them. So, yeah. Anyway, that's pretty much all. So let me know if you guys have any questions or anything. And if not, then I will probably make my next update for six weeks after I have my six-week appointment to update you guys on um, everything. So, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. And if not, then I'll talk to you guys in, like, two weeks. So talk to you later. Bye.